Yo, what's up guys? It's Eric the Barber coming at you with another tutorial. Today we'll be doing a fade on my client Gabriel. This is gonna be a high temp fade, high taper fade, whatever you guys wanna call it. Yes, it can pass for like a mid taper without a C cup, but to me this is a high fade. So I'm gonna start off by balding him out, making sure I put in my guideline where I need to put it. Then I'm gonna make sure I get all the small stubbles Get my little Andy shaver in there, you already know. Get both sides. Then what I'm gonna do is take a number four guard and I'm gonna go around the whole head. Make sure I get it nice and even. Don't wanna leave any hairs, you know, longer than the other, shorter than the other. Well, I said shorter than the other, but longer than the other. Then I'm gonna start off with my lever, not all the way open, but I'd say like on the fourth notch. So like fourth notch, half notch, make my first guideline. And then to take that bottom guideline out, I'm gonna close my lever all the way and flick out. So I'm not gonna go up and down, I'm gonna flick my wrist outwards. That way I'm not creating another guideline. Then I leave a small little guideline, like very, very small. So I'm gonna come back in with my trimmers and I'm just using the corners. And then using the corners will make you, you know, will help you not create another guideline, like I said. So corners are your best friends. If you see my other videos, you know your corners are your best friends. Then I'm gonna grab my Andy's Fat Blade. I don't know if you guys ever seen it, but it goes on a Masters. To me, all the way open, it's like a one and a half. If you close it halfway, it's like a number one guard. Then if you close it, it's like a half guard. So I go ahead all the way open, which is a one and a half. Then I close it all the way and I hit that bottom guideline as best as I can to make that line disappear. Then it should leave a small little guideline and then I'll come back over in detail. But right here, I'm going all the way open now and that's gonna equal a one and a half guard. And I'm just hitting that, that top line, trying to make another guideline basically. Then I'm gonna come in with my number two guard and I'm gonna basically try to freehand it into the number four so I don't have to use my number three guard. So to me, it's easy for you to blend a number two guard into a number four guard. So that's why I put a number four guard all the way around, keep it real dark and then blend the number two right into that number four. I don't know if that made sense. It made sense to me. So I hope it makes sense to you. Can you smell what the rock is cooking? Then I'm gonna go ahead, line him up behind the ear and on his little box area. Uh, this will show if you have any imperfections in the fade. So like if you left any lines or if you left any dark spots and then you just come back over. Cause sometimes, you know, you finish the fade, you line them up and then you see the lines that come over at the end. I kind of like getting that out the way. It's not that it's like time, you know, it helps with time or anything, but it kind of just like, it just gives me a peace, a sense of peace if that makes sense. Can you smell what the rock is cooking? And then right here, I'm gonna line up his box. I do use a razor, not right now, but at the end. Uh, and then I go in in detail. So I go all the way open first with my blade, only using my corners. And then if I still see small guidelines, I'm gonna close the lever as I need to. If I have to go up higher in a fade, I'll probably put on like a half guard or a zero guard. But in this case, using the system I use, I kind of just, you know, go all the way open close it little by little until I see everything just flow perfectly into each other. Then I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the same steps on the back. I didn't really get to get a good angle on the back taper, but this is what you guys get. It's some, all right? So I go close, then I'm gonna open my lever like halfway, and then I'm gonna close my lever all the way and make sure I get that bottom guideline out. Make sure when you're doing all this, you take your time. I know you may see that I'm going fast. It's just 
kind of how I work. Like, my hands just kind of move quick. I still take, like, 45 minutes to cut hair, but I just, my hands move so quick. And sometimes I'm like, dang, I wonder if the client is, like, comfortable. Or if he's like, is he rushing it? But in reality, is just how I cut. I just cut, like, fast. But not fast, you know, because I still, like I said, I take forever on the haircut. But right here, I go all the way open, which is a one and a half. Then I'm going to close the lever all the way. Hit that bottom guideline. See, I close that little thing right there. That's like a half guard to me. Then I close it all the way. Hit that bottom guideline. Flick out. I'm, try I'm not trying to make another guideline. I'm just trying to make everything flow into each other and disappear. So hit that bottom guideline all the way closed. Then I'm going to come back. Remember, afterwards, the guard all the way open. The Andy's Masters all the way open. Just the lever. It's going to be, you know, it's going to blend right into it. I never have trouble blending in. And if I do, I grab my zero guard. But I, I honestly don't have trouble blending in like that. Right here, I grab my number two guard. And I'm blending the number two guard right into that number four we put all around his head. You'll see some dark spots, but, you know, you always come in and detail afterwards. So this is just like a rough draft. Right here, I'm gonna go ahead and line them up. Make sure you don't push them back in this area. Sometimes, you know, even though they don't see it, but you know, sometimes the regrowth is very, blech, you know? So try not to push them back unless you really absolutely have to, which in most cases you don't, but you know. Get all them small hairs right there. And then once you line them up, you'll see all the imperfections. Like right there, I see a bunch of, you know, details I need to go back into. Do what I got to do, you know. So make sure you line them up, like I said. Don't leave it for the end of the cut. Unless you really, you know, don't care. I kind of just, like I say, it kind of just leaves a sense of, uh, of uh, passion fruit. Yeah, I said passion fruit. I, I don't know. But passion fruit. Then right here, I go all the way open. Only using my blade. And if that doesn't take it out, I'm going to close the lever little by little. Only use your corners when you detail. Because if you're, you're detailing, you don't want to create another guideline. So use your corners all the time. And then make sure you point them towards the mirror, too. If you point it towards the mirror, it's going to show all the imperfections, some you might not see. Make sure you get some good lighting. I have two ring lights, like one on the right side, one on the left side. So i got a bunch of light in there. Then I repeat the same steps. Make another guideline take out that bottom line you close it all the way and then if it still leaves a small guideline which most of the time it does you can just use your andy slim lines or any trimmers you have that are kind of like almost zero gap just use your corners and that'll take it right then right here with my andy's fat masters i'm going halfway open then I'm going to hit that bottom guideline of that all the way close. And that should just take off most of the weight off of that, you know, guideline that I put in. Make it easier for you to blend in everything. Then once I'm done with that, I'm going to open my lever all the way, which to me equals a one and a half. And I'm going to hit that top guideline right there just to make a small little guideline. Once you're done with that, uh, your number two guard should blend in right into that number four guard. Just make sure you always take your time. You don't want to rush anything because I don't care. Rush it if you have to. How about that? As long as the outcome is beautiful, that's all that matters. I know some people cut real quick. I wish I could cut quick. That way I could get more people in. But at the same time, it's like if I set my appointments for like 30 minutes and like 20 minutes, 15 minutes, that's going to hurt me. I ain't trying to be hurt. So I just keep mine at like 45 minutes all good and then i'm gonna right here i'm gonna go ahead you know put my uh my line in get behind the air i always like getting that part right there real fresh real nice and crispy behind the ear i know some people will be like oh yeah you pushed it back or they call it like a white wall but nah it's not it's not really a pushback unless i'm really like all the way back you feel me it's just you know a minor cosmetic thing in my bob where it looks real dope line up right here you definitely don't want to push this side back because that is ugly 
that is ugly when it goes back. Trust me, I've, I've been pushed back before. That shiggity is ugly. Right here, I'm gonna go all the way open using my corners. See the small, it's still a small line right there. So I'm gonna go ahead, use my corners, close it up just a little. And if that doesn't take it, I'm gonna keep closing it. You can close it all the way if you have to, as long as you use your corners, but make sure that you start off open first and then work your way down. You don't wanna start off closed and then go up because it could mess you up, okay? Open, close it a little bit, close it a little bit, close it a little bit, then close it all the way. How about that? Right here, right here, I take down the hair with a number three guard. I'm not trying to dig too much into the hair. That's what I was about to say, into the hair. You don't want to dig too much into the hair you just kind of want to flick out at it. And then when I do my lineups, I always start in the middle and then go to whichever side I feel more comfortable, my side being the right side. So I'll go right side, make sure I get it nice and even, point them towards the mirror, make sure it looks straight as symmetrical as possible. Everybody got different head shapes, so not everybody's gonna have a per perfect shape up. So remember that. If you starting off and you like, damn, I can't never get this shape up straight, I still got trouble too. But you gotta try your best to make it an illusion where it looks Nice, okay? I couldn't film the other side. I'd be having trouble difficulties and troubleshooting and I'd be lagging. I got all that, you know, okay? So I gotta show you guys what I got. There's something, at least as long as I help somebody with a fade, that's all that matters. My, my shape ups ain't the best either, man. I'm still working. My fades ain't the best either. I'm still working. But if I could teach you something and help you out in some sort of way, you're welcome. I love you. And I appreciate you for watching this. This is the end of the fade. My tattoos are beautiful. I can tell you that. That shirt is nice too that I got on. And that cape is beautiful. And this client is beautiful. I'm just saying. Thank you for watching. Have a good one. Like, comment. If you're not subscribed, what are you doing, man? Subscribe, bro. Come on, man. I love y'all. Thank y'all for watching. Have a good one. Peace. Over.